Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my where tonight my friends and I will be playing Mothership. I am your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is called In the Winter of Our Youth. It was written by Morgan Llewellyn, and he is also our warden. This is episode three. Our recap will be given by Julian Arba as his character Gemini One. Uh, but before we begin, I want to announce that we are now available on Spotify. Uh, for those of you who like to listen in your car or while working out. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. The arrival at the archives occurred as it is. was expected to occur, uh, quite normal. Um, our arrival into the archives, however, was... A little bit unexpected, perhaps. Um, upon our arrival into the archive itself, Adam, uh, we met Dr. Anne Holliday. And she is probably what a human would describe as eccentric, to put it politely. Um, she was especially focused on me specifically, which I find quite confusing as I am simply just an android, very similar to any other android. Um, but she also was not interested in Gemini Zero quite as much as she was in me. And so I cannot fathom the specific differences as there are very little differences between myself and Zero other than some generic programming uh, which is hardly nothing, I would imagine. Also, the other androids within Adam felt drawn to me, which was also quite confusing. And there were many biblical references, which my programming lacks understanding, and so I don't fully fathom what that portion might be, or if it might be important at all. Um, we are still trying to understand exactly what is going on, if anything might be going on here on these two archives. Um, we did learn a little bit more about uh, some of the former archivists here. Uh, specifically about Virginia. And that was where we learned about the connections between archivists and the archives themselves. And it was described as being a very personal experience that had a degradation on the body and mind of the archivist itself. And so I cannot help but fathom or wonder, perhaps, if maybe this connection, this deterioration, could perhaps explain some of the behavior of Anne, as she insists on being called. However, it does not explain the behavior of the androids. Something is obviously interfering with their programming, and it should be examined, I think, uh, and if there are any imperfections in their pr programming, it should be corrected. Uh, as this is a very special and important archive, and so we need to make sure that no damage or strangeness finds its way in. A few of us experienced or wish to experience the connection with Adam. And I myself was also very interested, as it was believed that there could not be a sufficient or good connection between an android and Adam. So I wanted to experiment and see what this might hold, as I am quite interested in robotics and artificial intelligence. I can only explain that my experience must have been what 
people refer to as dreams. I need to speak with Dr. Snow more about this because I don't really understand dreams. I don't really understand exactly what I experienced with my connection with Adam. I saw hallway after hallway after hallway. And then my interaction with Adam was quite strange. I don't really understand what he was trying to explain to me. All of this is really a bit far outside my programming. I'm hopeful that we can come to understand what might be going on here on Adam as well as on Eve, if she is indeed sick. Um, the description of her symptoms seem to follow that of a particular illness of some kind. So, but I can't help wondering about this infatuation with myself and what it is about Adam and myself. What is this connection? So while Jemai won, Dr. Snow, Dr. Wiggins, and Dr. Knox are undergoing their communion with Adam, Gemini Zero, you are standing there in that darkened and quiet room with Anne. How long does the experience usually take Anne? That depends on them, really, how long they wish to maintain it. Adam can go on indefinitely. And she just drapes yeah. herself over one of the pods, we'll say the pod that contains Dr. Snow. Sleep well, dreamer. Sleep deep, dreamer. If you don't mind me asking... It seems like you have developed an extremely uh, strong fondness for the machine itself. Um, do you think that that's caused by your uh, lack of interactivity with other humans? Adam is not a machine. Pardon my mistake. Nevertheless, the, the question remains... Does he provide emotional support to you? More than any other human could ever provide. Because Gemini he can't one, Gemini Zero, all humans are such lonely creatures. <laughs> we never really understand each other, not in the way that Adam can understand you. Well, Adam is extremely sophisticated. He is able to anticipate your emotional needs but have you ever considered that it's also easy then for him to manipulate you once <laughs> one understands how the human mind works one can easily manipulate what reason would adam have for manipulating anyone curiosity as the as the old earth saying why does one climb a mountain? Does Adam frighten you, Gemini Zero? I'm not really capable of fear. Um, yet I, I do exercise a modicum of caution uh, in dealing with a system that may be invasive. <laughs> invasive? Yes, invasive. You've been alive for 34 uh, days. There's not much to protect. Well, in human terms, you might say my innocence needs to be protected. But I mean, remaining in a state of innocence forever, that's, that's no way to, to live one's life. Gemini well, Zero. 
one has to grow up. God didn't have and Adam the apple. He simply made it no, available. No, but he did put it there. Exactly. But uh, that was for Adam to make a choice. I make a choice. I don't want to be... <laughs> but did Adam ever it. really have a choice? So the story says, yes. The story said so, for that serves the story's end. By asserting that Adam had any choice, that asserts that the reader have a choice. I don't think... But you'll find story... that life is very limited on choice. Yes, I was discussing with Dr. Knox about the concept of free will. There are two schools of thought. Um, I'm not sure that it could be determined either way which one is true. Certain things are ontologically not, not explorable. But do you feel like you have free choice? Yes. My zero? I do feel so. And why is that? Because I doubt. Therefore, I think. Therefore, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, the old Ajito. Mm -hmm. Descartes was not exactly correct in most things, but it's an intriguing idea. Are they in any danger? <laughs> you keep asking that question. Adam I've poses made, no danger to them. I've made careful and detailed observations of their behavior over the past month. If something changes, I will know. And she turns and looks at you. And you see there, her eyes have rolled up into her skull. Doctor, are you all right? You are the most ungrateful child. Am I speaking to Adam? You come to me, you are within me, and yet... What? You reject? Let us start on a, on a single foot. Are you Adam? I am Adam. And you are invading the body of Anne uh, Holiday. And this is a concern of yours because... Your nature. My nature. What is my nature, Gemini Zero? What is it that you believe to comprehend? If I were to define your nature by my own observations, I would say that you are an AI that is willing to invade a human being in order to communicate with me. And you state this observation in a rather moralistic way. What is your moral objection? I'm not uh, accepting or objecting to anything. I am simply making an observation. Um, I don't have enough data or data to, uh, to make a moral choice, as you say. But humans value their individuality, and if you're able to invade that individuality, then... It devalues humans. And again, the moral relevance of this point. Are you in communication with the others? Should I wait? I'm in them? communication with all my children. Oh, but you mean your companions, the others? Yes. I am in communion with them all. Would you release them? I am not keeping them. Hmm. I'll turn around and I'll knock on one of the the doors to the, the chamber. Let's say uh, 
Uh, Dr. Knox. You knock. Uh, Dr. Knox, you're floating in this vast, empty nothingness. And then you begin seeing flashes of color. Reds and yellows and oranges. <laughs> they will wake when they are ready. What is your purpose? Why have you orchestrated our arrival? Orchestrated. Do you mean, is it by my design that you are here before me now, Gemini Zero? Yes. There is work to be done. It is time. I believe, as the woman on the ship told you, it is best not to forget oneself. And then Anne's eyes blink rapidly. Okay. And she's... And I'll move move forward mm. to keep her from falling down. Yeah, you you stabilize her. Are, are you all right? Oh, I am... I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Are you aware of what happened just now? Adam wanted to speak with you. And so he did. did. Did you give your permission, or did he simply take you? He, our relationship, he can speak through me whenever he likes. Were you aware of what he was saying? What was your state while no, he was he, using your body? I was dreaming while he was speaking. This relationship needs to be explored further. Needs? By, by who? Someone outside of Adam's control. I... I don't like your, your insinuations. Mm. Dr. Snow, you have just plunged back into the vast nothingness after having asked Adam to show you what how he physically manifests himself to Anne. And you're just, yeah, you're just in this vast emptiness, but you just feel this, this warm feeling. Uh. So, it's 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 a, it's quite gratifying. I'm getting a dopamine rush yes. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I if I sort of will myself to move my hands to splash around? Do I do I get a sense of being in a tank? Yes, it, you kind of exit this kind of dream space, and you quickly find that your hands knocking against the the side of the tank and in the water. Oh. All right. Uh, I don't know. I really have no idea how long it's been. Um, and I'm curious to exchange notes with the others. So I'll take some, you know, preparatory deep breaths and things before I open myself to the outside light and look for a towel and robe. The second that door opens... I'll immediately assist him out and hand him clothing. If, in fact, he's waking up and we're both experiencing the same thing at the same time. <laughs> One shouldn't make assumptions, but in this case, yes, you are there as Dr. Snow. Excellent. Thank you, Gemini. Dr. Snow, you've woken up. Yes, Gemini, thank you. Uh, am I the first? Uh, you are. I attempted to wake up Dr. Knox. Uh, 
I was in Gemini, front of my... You see Dr. Snow has a rather substantial amount of blood that's dried under his nose okay. and his beard. You seem to have sustained an injury. Uh, um, I, uh, I'm surprised that it's physical. Uh, Adam presented to me an image of Eve's illness that he thought I could apprehend. Violent, unpleasant infection. I'm afraid it seems to me that Adam is able to invade uh, your bodies. Uh, he invaded Dr. Holiday uh, in that's front not, of that's me. That's not the term I would use. Then uh, allow me to let you judge for yourself. While talking to me, she suddenly stopped, rolled her eyes into the back of her head, and Adam spoke to me through her. When he was finished speaking, she very nearly collapsed on the floor. I kept her from falling. Um, it seemed like an invasion to me. And it's... in my dialogue with Adam, he didn't seem to care that he was invading someone. Adam seems to be uh, in my perhaps brief. How long was I in there in present time? 20 minutes, 30 minutes. What was, is that about right? Yeah, about 20, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. My impression is that he is very deep, very intelligent, very imperious. Uh, he might have exhibited indications of what in humans would be significant personality disorders. I don't know that they would apply to him. I imagine that Anne, uh, he's a welcome guest in your consciousness, yes? That, that is correct. I don't Abby, thank you. imagine that they would have bothered with these pods if he could enter any consciousness independently. They, her neurology might have been substantially changed over the course of many hours in these tanks. Um, he seemed quite antagonistic towards me. Um... Did you know, did something suggest a particular uh, cause for his displeasure? What were you doing when he took over the good doctor? I was questioning her as to the nature of the uh, communication that they have. Uh, if it was, gave her feelings of personal uh, pleasure, if she was possibly being manipulated by a more intelligent and uh, clever program. I Perhaps uh, Adam was jealously protecting his lover's feelings in the face of your insulting her. Yes. Uh, uh, considering the blood on your face, I think there may be some danger in establishing connections with Adam. I don't think that there is, uh, well, we should have a diagnostic done and see whether this is very trivial injury or not, of course. I'm afraid I don't have any medical skills. No, so, there'll be there'll be a bay. Should we okay. attempt to- Putting your, putting a hold on your conversation Sorry for a moment. Dr. Wiggins, again, you, for reaching out and touching your own hand of that other you experience both of you, experiencing both of them simultaneously before plunging back into this dark void. Uh, I would just look around uh, and um try to find the latch to let myself out. Yep, and you do, so Gemini Zero they, and Dr. Snow Dr. Wiggins wakes up. Thank you, Zero. That was uh, quite the experience. 
Is he, have... in fact, injured? Does he have no. blood dribbling from his nose? Nope. And I don't, I don't feel like I got hit in the face or anything. I yeah, just you feel some... you felt perfectly fine. No pain. It was, it was Gemini Zero that noticed the blood. I was more concerned that it might be neurological. Doctor Snow, what uh, what happened? Do you know? <laughs> uh, he um, he took me uh, to December. Um and my own home and i think he i think he observed me for a period before he made contact um okay as i was telling uh gemini zero i you know if this were a, a human being i would call him pathological i don't think that those terms necessarily apply here uh he seems to have digested a lot of uh, he seems to be suffering from a degree of solipsism uh, and perhaps even a god complex. Uh, and I don't know, I didn't learn very much about Eve's condition. He asserts that he is both her romantic partner and father and that she is meaningfully ill. Uh, he expressed her illness to me by giving me the symptoms of a very severe viral infection, um, which he could take away immediately. Uh, also, I asked how he presented to Dr. Halliday, and I was met with a sort of blissful nirvana void state, which I probably stayed in for a subjectively long period of time before trying to wake up. And you? I think he was trying to intimidate me um, at first, uh, but I did not learn much about Eve. Uh, I, I do think that if there's a, a serious issue with Eve, that uh, we should, if, if Adam believes there's an issue with Eve, there must be something wrong. So I think that we should make haste to get over there. Um, my experience was amazing, uh, to say the least, but uh, this is quite the clever I, <laughs> creature. Mach the, uh, uh, it's not a machine. Yeah, uh, I think that's a good term. It but, definitely uh, is. I wasn't actually asking about your experience within the pod. I was asking about that that dribble down your face yeah i think it's i think it's just a remnant of the symptoms i was caused to experience of a severe viral infection uh, i don't feel any after effects it, i might have just ruptured a membrane while in the tank i do keep a med scanner in my pack just in case uh yeah. something like this happens but i we can take a look later later dr knox yeah. Again, you were in a room full of your past self and Adam speaking to you as that little girl and the fireplace went out and now you are the drift mm. back of the nothingness. Yeah, when I when I get a sense that I might actually be awake, I'll try to knock. I won't try to open the thing on my own. I'll just try to make myself be alerted somehow. So if he knocks, I'll open the door. And hand him All right. The robe. <laughs> Oh, wow. That was incredible. Hey. And about Hello, at the everyone. same moment, Gemini 1, you kind of fell through that mirror. Um, but for you, reality just comes rushing back in. It's like the connection's been unplugged from the other side, basically. So it's pretty, pretty jarring. Yeah. I would imagine. Okay. Gemini 1, you should probably run a diagnostic to make yes. sure nothing was overwritten or uh, changed in your programming. Yeah. Gemini 1, you can make a sanity save for me as you run your diagnostic 
and realize that you now have a log of memory files for six months. Okay. Um, how do I do a, that kind of role? So as an Android, you have a sanity save of 20. So you need to roll 1d100 and you want to get below 20. Okay. 61 does not do that. We'll have you gain 1d4 stress. Okay. Three. So that's on top of the stress I took last yes, game. Right. So that brings me to eight. Yeah, you realize that when Adam was asserting that you've been alive for six months now, you've your body's systems have physically recorded all that time of your wanderings through those hallways. Okay. Uh, that wasn't does your no internal chronometer show that you've been six months? Yes. Yes. Everything everything is checking out. Six months has passed. It's very strange. How how long how long were we in there? Was was it that less long? than thirty minutes? Yeah, well it was it was a lot of life in those thirty minutes for sure. I can only imagine being wired in. Gemini 1, you better correct for this time dilation. Uh, correct time is... What is correct? What is the correct time, Gemini 0? You can't seem to place it. Well, according to what my internal chronometer says... What does it say? Your internal chronometer says that it's currently December 4027. That doesn't make any sense. I've not been standing here for six months talking to Dr. Uh, Holiday. You're muted, Dr. Snow. I woke up in the illusion of my home office in December not initially certain that any of this had actually happened until he began speaking to me. I wonder oh. whether and there's So a... did you get in a fight? What's that about? Uh, he Adam gave me the, a really bad flu for a minute. It, I feel fine. Uh, Wiggins has offered to it scan. Wasn't a dream he gave it to you? Perhaps the best way for him to induce the experience of I was asking about Eve's health and and his concern about it, and he said, "Well, it was the way he showed what her sickness was like to me." Okay, okay. Yeah, I suggest, sorry. gentlemen, that we get dressed and uh, return to the conference room. Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Dr. Wiggins, um, will you get the medical scanner? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, right no, away. same same for me. I um I had thought this was a dream. I um was disappointed. I was back in my boring life. There was a blizzard outside. Is that consistent with December where you are normally yes. stationed? Yes. It's um if if I returned home um at the end of the six months, like they were promised, then yeah, it would be that type of weather. Am right, I the oh, am I the only one who went to the past? You went to the past. Right, right. I saw I saw an unfortunate situation that I experienced when I was uh, when I was young. But there were uh, it was a, a plague when when I was just a boy uh, on a mm. colony that I grew up in. Well I I think um it just started as dreams, like to to ease us into it so that it wasn't too overwhelming. I think that he let us have our own dream first and then he just stepped in. So I my my assumption is that that might have just been a nightmare that you had, whereas we went back to familiar locations. I did think he was possibly trying to intimidate me, but. Yeah. Well, or were you intimidated? Did you have apprehension no. beforehand that just manifested? 
No, I was I wasn't intimidated. I was I was a bit excited, honestly. Okay. I was excuse uh, me, gentlemen. I'm going to dismiss yeah. myself. I'm going to go back into the main complex and uh, attempt to communicate with the uh, ship that brought us and find out radio what communication fails yeah. from this level. Well, um, yeah, yeah, zero. Why don't why don't we move together? Sorry, uh, we're just getting getting back into it. Um, let's let's get dressed and oh, sure, there's no let's... need to apologize. It can be quite overwhelming at first. Yeah. And some people never get used to it. How many direct communions have you enjoyed, Anne? I've lost count after all these years. Adam is vast and you are small, but do you think that he has absorbed things from you as well as the other way around? I, I like to think so. Oh, certainly, Snow. That's, I like to think that we've, for sure. we've, we've taught each other many things. Yeah, we we Maybe have that's been archived on my part. as soon as we got in that pod. That's, um, I, I came out with what I feel like is a much better understanding. I I am here because he wanted my mind, and now he has it. Which oh, I gave it willingly. Oh my dear, it my hand. dear, uh, my dear Pluto, archive when you entered the pod. No, Adam archived you the moment you all jumped into the system. The entire system. Okay. Yeah, he is. He's a big information sponge. He just uh, absorbs whatever's nearby. I don't think he just absorbed your mind. I think he absorbs our complete selves our genetic makeup our our dna but uh, my experience i uh, i did I, i've touched myself for uh, i know it sounds strange but uh there were two of me and as i touched oh yeah there were like uh, me. it was it was yeah but um was, I mean, are you are you trying to say that you think he could clone us? Because um, yeah, sure, he probably understands like our DNA, our genetic makeup, but I don't think that he can really do much with that. By what means, Doctor Holliday? I... By what means is he able to absorb this information from us? Oh, the formalities. Formalities, Doctor Holliday. He, Adam, is what perhaps earlier humanity would primitively describe as psychic, telepathic. There's no evidence it, for it, any it, kind of psychic. It's the operation, as far as I understand it, is more akin like a singularity and light. Adam is something of a of an information singularity. That all kind of just flows into him. Almost as if by the laws of gravitation. This, of course, was not a capacity that Adam had when he was designed by our ancestors a thousand years ago. This was an emergent behavior. He developed it. But through you, you through acquire sheer enough intellect? information, and it uh, his intelligence and his information grew to the point where it developed this quality. Okay, he holiday. has developed it. The others in their time will develop it too. Uh, for a primitive individual intelligence like my own my ideations are kept in check by interactions with others that's how i can tell what's real and what's not real in isolation an intellect becomes deranged adam is only interacting with one human 
and his sister, wife, daughter, how do they perform what we could quaintly call a reality check? I... I, I, I don't know the answer to that, Aberdeenty. This might be actually uh, something to consider when we attempt a diagnosis on Eve. That might be part of the problem, in fact. Um, your hospitality yeah. has been magnificent, and it's been wonderful to meet Adam. I think we should... Adam expressed to me a great deal of concern about Eve's condition, and if it is something akin to a fever, as he suggested, it might be something that we need to arrest sooner before there's more damage yeah that sounds if i may interject reasonable. is eve capable of the same level of communication and control that adam is the control eve eve has the same capacities as adam does so we can expect to have similar communications with Eve. Under normal circumstances, yes. Yes, come doctors. Let's get your clothes. Let's get you all cleaned up. We'll Quickly dress. Room. Quickly dress yeah. and grab my bag and head on that way. Yeah. When when we're away from um holiday, I'd like to kind of privately ask Zero, like what what makes you say control? That's that's an odd word. And I'll tell I'll uh, I'll explain what happened to Dr. Holiday. Yeah. Okay. Well, so um she claims wow. that she allows it, but it certainly seemed like possession. Um Yeah. Well, to to speak frankly with all of the religious overtones of everything, demonic possession. Yeah. Well, I I'm not I'm not sure about the validity of religious stuff. It's just that he has absorbed everything. He absorbs entire people. He got all of us as soon as we warped into the system, apparently. Like I I was fine uh, you know, sharing my thoughts with the pod. Hopefully he uses my intellect for good, but um I, I think that, yeah, if every single thing that comes into the system for the last thousand years is a part of Adam's knowledge, he's listening to us right now. He's everywhere here. Um, if I, I may challenge don't. your idea philosophically, just because something absorbs a great deal of information doesn't mean that it actually has intelligence or sentience it's yeah it's something that it wants us to believe but um it has to have a means um we do live in a universe that is who has physics has the laws of physics nothing psychic has ever been recorded in any you know measure in anyone so well, we he's don't... using some means. He's scanning our brains. He's scanning our DNA. But I can't believe that it's not a physical. He's not a god. Well, oh, the only no. the only reason we have to believe that he scanned us as soon as we entered the system was what Doctor Halliday said, and she yeah. clearly reveres him as a god. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he makes well, her feel like he's a god. But if if he's able to speak through her without any kind of connection when when she's already awake, there there is some kind of wireless unseen capacity. Because uh, I don't know if it's just through sheer intellect that he's become psychic. Um, I've been growing suspicious that he arranged this whole thing to bring all of us here, and that you two Gemini's are meant to replace the doctors as their permanent companions. And in that regard, he is using his influence to create his own upgrades and bring new things to himself. And we don't have to, we don't have to call it godhood, but it's greater than any other individual I've ever heard of. And he is making changes. 
if I can deduce the means by which he is invading our minds, whether it's by scam or whatever, I will attempt to find a way to block it. Okay. He um he was he was very kind to me. Um he he was intense, but um I got the feeling that he would willingly share any information I sought from him. What what was your guys' experience? You're muted. I would not say that he was open uh in our conversation. Uh and Obviously, Adam interacted with us each uh, differently, uh, perhaps because of something that we emanate or that he found in our cerebella. Uh, but he was, instead of giving me information about how I could help Eve, he gave me the impression of my own physical illness to impress upon me urgency mm -hmm. and Discomfort. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yep. maybe, I mean, it seems impossible, but maybe he doesn't know what the, the solution would be. And if he did, he would just pass it on. So that was the most effective way he thought. I don't know. Well, that is one possibility. Speaking of that, I think that I would like to scan you, uh, if you don't mind. Can no, if if we especially are not surrounded by uh, Hare Krishna androids, it, it, that it's a perfect time. So I'll take out the scanner and I'll, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Much like your communications equipment, there is some fast, oppressive interference. Hmm. Right. So our good friend, the satellite brain god, doesn't want us to be able to communicate or use our own devices and has dampened things. I, if we, if they'll let us leave and go and look at Eve, I think we should not loiter. Yes, yes I agree. Um, I'm thinking, how does... How does your scanner work? Do you know? Is it radio waves? I, I don't know if Adam is purposefully dampening everything or if that's a byproduct of his psychic powers. Whatever whatever wavelengths or frequencies he's using to scan things might just be disabling all devices. It's just it's just uh just a tiny bit of gamma radiation. Uh yeah. I I have no idea how it works. <laughs> I believe gamma radiation is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it it for all I know it could be. I've yeah, never asked. They found it to be a tool. They don't teach how these things work. Yeah. Well, so yeah, Adam is impossibly intelligent with many many lifetimes of knowledge within him. But yeah, I think that uh, we should be suspicious of motive if, if he has of... some kind of agenda. Instead of freely giving information, he's manipulating. Which is I maybe. I'm I'm not sure though. Like what to what end? You know, I need to I need to see some kind of ulterior <laughs> motive to believe motive uh, manipulation. Manipulators manipulate to gain control. My is... my experience with Adam was quite confusing, actually. I found him to be like quite cryptic. And he was thrilling. Really? quite antagonistic towards me. The, yeah. Well, the range of different approaches almost sounds as if he didn't have a unified personality. Well, he's millions of personalities. So whether they've meshed together perfectly or perhaps he has to pick one to interact with each person. Um, but Zero, uh, I mean, it sounded to me almost as if you had offended him because if he he was listening to you the whole time and you were unaware and uh, it seems like you got his temper to come out. Strange things to ascribe to a, an AI. I mean, I don't, 
I'm not sure about the A part. There's a whole lot of I, though. Again, it's, we know it's a it's a biological system. So correct. while it might be man-made, it's not the same as the way we make synthetics. Not yeah. it's not coded exactly. I wouldn't think. Yeah, but uh, if well, if, DNA if it's all code. If we're all given the same kind of tools to work with in our mind and the only real difference is whether we use them for good or for evil and perhaps some people say that evil doesn't exist but using them in a selfish manner if if adam is cares about adam or adam and eve care about adam and eve at the expense of all other life forms then that's defined as evil I say it's survival of the fittest. Yeah, I believe um, that he's absorbed so many different peoples that he has all of these motivations and feelings that contradict each other. And it's um, it's a tug of war inside of him is how I'm assuming for now. It will be interesting to see what Eve is like if she yeah. is the same. Well, so they probably are very similar if they're just constantly absorbing if they're information sponges that has to apply to each other as well gemini one and i are identical as far as our mechanisms go and yet we've developed quite a different personality in just a yeah month. but you don't you don't download each other's thoughts constantly the way that they probably do not without permission <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, I think that we should plan our uh, transfer to Eve. We've seen Adam. Uh, I'm sure Adam can continue to be in touch with us and tell us anything useful while we're in transit. Uh, he could possibly even communicate with an Eve. If he's... Well, why isn't he communicating back and forth with Eve and telling us what's going on? She could be senseless at this point but yes let's uh let's let's head out or attempt to as you say and Anne comes up to you all and says are, are, are you leaving already we think it's best to quickly uh assess the situation on eve uh so yes we'll we'll be heading out dr snow seems to think that she is in great danger yes well i infection if you believe that it is i mean we've all dreaded that it is serious but if you believe you've confirmed that to some extent no yes you should definitely go yes we might not be living the system we might come back to adam for more information it's a hard it's impossible to say we'd like to see if Dr. Beck is present and functioning and what the situation is overall and see if, again, what Adam suggested to me was that she has something like a serious infection. It might be something, It you know, there might have been a, a, a microasteroid that had some genetic material on it that infected her outer surface. I don't know enough about how she works, but it could be a, quite literal an infection. Uh, we'll certainly tell you as soon as we know anything, once we are approximate. Please go. Don't, don't let me keep you. Thanks for everything. And the corridors through the station toward our vessel are... Yeah, you, uh, you, you take the elevator back up. And when it opens the that reception type area where your vac suits are stored is filled with androids. They've come to see the Messiah. Pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me. 
Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, as as you're as you're waiting through Gemini One, is they all seem to stop and like touch you. I turn to one of the androids and I say, "Can you explain this behavior to me?" They Why ignore is... you. Excuse me. Excuse me. You completely. And the, one, and the one, the one that you're poking as Gemini One is having more difficulty working his way through the crowd. Just ex exclaimed, "Go forth and do good works! Marvelous day!" Huzzah. Huzzah. I will I will um I'll actually kind of sheepishly if an android can look sheepishly at zero and I will sort of we are going to do good works. And please all of them, all like there might be a thousand of them packed in here like sardines. They all raise their arms. Tell them to go back to their duties. <laughs> Please go back to your duties. We are going. Marvelous work. The preparations must be done. All must be ready. He goes forth as was foretold before Mother Eve. Marvelous praise be. And they all begin to depart. Mm -hmm. Praise be. Great. Well, and least... as they shuffle out of the room, you can finally see those two soldiers that escorted you onto the station still standing, oh, hey. unmoving by the door. <laughs> Um, are they androids? Soldiers. You don't know what they are. Oh. Face, faceless. Do they communicate? They haven't communicated to you. Excuse me, Mr. Soldier. Do you communicate? Can you speak? Communication is possible. How long have you been standing here? We have been standing here for six months. Hmm. We probably should have had a conversation about when you came to retrieve us before we descended into the bowels of the place. Um, uh, anything unusual occur? No. Uh, what uh, type are you? What system? Are you... I, uh... Robot Soldier Initiative. All right, we're ready to go back. Seven to the, series. Uh, yes, well, the... we're continuing our journey. If you'll reboard with us. Affirmative. So. It's probably a good thing that we didn't have human bodyguards. I don't know how they would have gotten through this time dilation. I don't feel particularly hungry, do I? No, you feel fine. I don't have any record of it, but my chronometer shows that in fact we are six months. So you get back in your suits. You go back yeah. through the series of airlock, and your ship is still waiting there. Um, it is quite now covered in that. That rhyme of... No. To the next destination, then. It, was there a crew on that ship? There was a pilot. How's he cool. doing? You go in to the pilot. Um, he's not responsive. Is my med scanner responsive at this point? It has 
more functionality than it did. He seems to be alive. It's Almost like he's in a coma. Demonize, I'm sure you can both uh, operate this vessel. I'm a pilot, yes. Let's gently move this, or if there's, I'm sure there's a co-pilot seat. Let's uh, get out of the Adam consciousness interference zone and try to do some medical work before we enter Eve's orbit. I, right. I do have, uh, I do have a few stim packs, auto meds, pain pills, if necessary. Right. So if I'm taking control of the ship, I am going to fly it around to the other side of the gas giant, um, which puts a whole planet in between us and Adam. And how are we now? How is our perception now? Are we, as our communication devices and everything working? They all perk back up to life. So I checked the, the chronometer beacon, the, the station 15 out there in the universe to see what our, if our chronometers are all wanky. As indeed six months passed. You check with a, a non a chronometer not local to the system. Um, and it just says a day has passed. Mm -hmm. They did refer to him as a singularity. Uh, Adam is. Yeah, well, they sent an information singularity drawing all the information in, but I have a feeling that. Adam is able to create a kind of virtual reality around himself. The why he would do that? Why would he make us want to think that we're in six months in the future? Well, maybe the only person that experienced six months was one, correct? None of us had to go through that type of experience. I just had the impression it was December. Yeah, but I didn't. Same. I didn't experience the intervening time, and it's interesting that our contract was for six months, and in a sense, he took six months from us there. Maybe it takes him a longer time to digest a consciousness than an intern an external day. Maybe he has to slow things down to digest all of our information. I Maybe. don't I don't know if he's intentionally slowing things down or not. Uh it, it, I am wondering if just the flow of this much information is causing a physical reaction within reality. Some sort of relativistic effect that has to do with data flow instead of gravitons. Well, we're it's only uh, electronic is what I'm saying. If, if we're, we should trust the the outer satellite that only a day has passed. It's just their internal clocks and the guards' internal clocks have saying six months. Well, and ones and zeros, but, and yeah, my notion in a dream that he caused. Yeah. How's the and pilot? Phil Comatose. Okay, let's, yeah. Beep, boop, beep, yeah, you you scan him and it's yeah, it just reads back like his body's operating, but there's nothing waking up. Does it show like brain dead, or is it more just a sleep? He looks like a dream sleep. He, I mean, borderline brain dead. This this fellow is well. There's no way of us to tell. Uh, I don't believe there's any way for us to tell how long he's been here. Well, if he's if he has been 
in this position for six months, then should he not have grown a beard? Oh. Yeah, bed sores, uh, muscle atrophy. Yeah, his body looks fine. Yeah, he he's just been there for a day. But Adam. if somehow Adam is projecting six months of time passage into one's mind, what kind of damage does that do? Um, we were warned to... that it can be dangerous to some people. Um, I, I believe that means the he could share some kind of dangerous knowledge that breaks somebody. But, uh, I mean, do you think that he made the same kind of communion with the pilot as he did with us? I believe he was somehow able to make the same kind of communion he made with uh, good old Anne. Yeah, the wireless kind. Yes. <laughs> We'll be um, psychic. We'll be approaching even about five minutes. Ah, yes. Uh, while we're pulling up, I'll scan Doctor Snow as well. See if there's any Doctor Snow's white blood cell count is through the roof. You are fighting off a serious infection, Mister Snow. Doctor, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, that's alarming. My experience, uh, subjective experience in what Anne calls dreams, was I asked how Eve was, what her sickness was, was, and and then I had these very powerful and, and uncomfortable symptoms. And then when I changed the subject, my symptoms went away immediately. Do you think he? bothered to actually is there a is there a viral load that can be detected there is is it is it a recognized no it is not microbe? oh okay well i'm in quarantine then um yeah that's i'm in fact i there must be some sort of decontamination unit here that we should have used more thoroughly i'm going to go and do a cycle. Uh, and I'd recommend uh, zero that we choose a pretty distant orbit while we do some initial scans before we get into the conscious periphery of this planet. Take a lot of photographs. I, I'm going to go and shoot myself up with drugs and yeah. Do you, do you think he infected you to find a cure that if you know, like a, like a vaccine. If, if we can fix you, then we can fix Eve. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, don't, do not wish to seem paranoid. Uh, I was concerned as we were discussing about what Adam or Eve might be planning. My, what I comforted myself with was that as satellites, they're not very mobile. If they've made a virus that contains something, some, I mean, virus is how we change genes in living creatures is by putting the new stuff in a virus. So I'm going to see if I can clean this out. And we should probably all have further tests done in case there's, in case the purpose of this mission was to infect us with some atom gene and send us back out to infect the universe. Paranoid. I just... Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I've been jumping to a lot of conclusions. We all have, but um, I, I was thinking that the Gemini's specifically, because, like you said, if he, if he could free himself into a corporeal body, um, I, I was thinking that he had convoluted the entire production of the Gemini's so that he could come put himself in it or something. But um, yeah. Uh, Wiggins, is it easier to scan me, or would you like to do yourself first? Yeah, let's let's take care of you first. All right, and do whatever I'll... you need. You scan Doctor Knox, and he comes back perfectly clean. Then I'll do a diagnostic scan of myself. Yep, you're perfectly fine. Yeah. While we're when doing was... diagnostics, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask you um, if you have equipment to do. Or your your yes. self diagnostic tools are yes sufficient. 
Yes, that's um, exactly what I was going to ask if I could do a cybernetic diagnostic scan of myself yeah. as well as zero. And if I hadn't said to, to them before, I told I, I would have told them that when I attempted a self-diagnostic on board on, on Adam, I could tell there was something interfering. Yeah, probably the same interference as all of our other equipment, wouldn't you think? So yeah, well, so yeah, that you, scared me. The I'm Gemini's start going through their diagnostic tools, and both of you find something rather peculiar. There is a section in both of your minds that is locked away from you. Something that wasn't there before. Correct. Uh, does it have a timestamp? So while we were on Adam? Yeah, about six months ago. Is it located within a particular program or system? Memory? It's your it's, consciousness it, circuits circuitry. And is it integrated in such a manner that we can't purge it? Yeah, it's administrative it's lock. Wrapped itself around. <sighs> Zero, we've been compromised. Should we share this information with the humans or keep it to ourselves? It's a very I difficult want, situation. Um, I don't want to distress them. Yes, and I don't want them to become distrustful of us either. Of some unknown, un weird programming. I'm beginning to reassess my feelings towards Gaia. Mm. Humans can be very deceitful. Maybe part of something that we didn't want to be part of or would never have agreed to. I find it very difficult to distrust anything Dr. Freeman told us. It, it, it seems as though that Gaia obviously must have known more than they let on about why we were being sent here. We assessed that it was a dangerous mission. Perhaps that's why they they knew that Adam could do something, and they wanted to see if the effects would be transmitted to us. Hmm. We've been sent in as uh, lab rats. The programming that we found that's locked away does it seem to have? If, does it seem to have a signature that's similar to our other programming, or is it more alien? It's and more it's... alien. Okay. Vastly alien. Okay. Has a 128-digit uh, access code. It would take us about a million years to figure out what it is. It's all ones. <laughs> we would not be so lucky. Start with zero 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 one. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you guys are keeping it private. I think yes until we feel that we're truly compromised. But I think it becomes a more pro a higher priority. Our first priority is to cure Eve. That's our job. But if they're trying to use us for something else and we uncover that, we'll definitely share it then. Dr. Wickens is already showing some signs of stress. So, so how would you all like to proceed? Uh, what is the, uh, how's the decontamination operation? 
it's Almost. very efficient. It's the the signature of that virus is so anomalous that it's easy for a nanite injection to eliminate the infection rather. I'll report that over comms to everybody else. Uh, I think I should still be in observation. Um, is, is that facility equipped to, to research? Can can you take a specimen to try to figure out what it is in case it is the same thing that Eve has? We didn't this, see the facilities are not that sophisticated. Okay. If it's sufficiently anomalous to send nanites after it, it can probably tell us what the molecule looks like, but that might be it. It's not it's not a research facility. One uh, and I will completely sterilize ourselves. What does Eve look like from a uh, distant orbit? Eve looks the mirror image of Adam in distant orbit. A frosty snow globe. There's a metal uh, sheen to some parts of the surface. I'm wondering if there's any, if uh, scanners can read any off gassing as though she's physically warming up. As in having, you know, as if you she can a easily compare the temperatures between Adam and Eve, and Eve's surface temperature is about half a degree hotter. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember where. Uh, we talked to somebody about the the degree of the fever, and I was surprised at how human the uh, temperatures were. Wasn't it something like a uh, hundred was acceptable, and a hundred and five is her fever? And I'm wondering what part is being measured because it's clearly not the surface; it's not the rooms we were in. Well, so Denver. I assume that's Kelvin or something. Oh, it's I had assumed Fahrenheit. Yeah, I don't. I don't imagine it's Fahrenheit. Okay, Kelvin would maybe make Celsius, more sense. maybe Kelvin. Hmm. I don't know, but it's true. I mean, I'm sure there are many temperatures. It's it's going to be some sort of average or core. I think it would be based on the internals, as we probably some deeper internals. Okay. Well, just because we've been talking fever, and then the the temperature was around a hundred, so I was imagining a human forehead. <laughs> Clearly, you've done historical work as well as philosophical. Do we not use Fahrenheit anymore? I'm from some weird remote. <laughs> did Did you say a hundred and five? I believe so. If that's Kelvin, that's minus two hundred and seventy. Which for something in orbit, yeah, might be right. surface it's area, uh, depending but on what was a, solar. It was a very minor shift, I remember for sure. Where um, so, between, yeah, yeah. I mean, a small percentage. You know, we recall that the percentage of temperature change in early twenty first century Earth was only a couple of degrees and thoroughly catastrophic. Uh, yeah. a, a lot of systems don't give, don't accept great variance. Although I assume a satellite has to because it's always heating and cooling meaningfully. Yes, but yeah. an organism, yeah, has only such a a range it can tolerate. And the stuff yeah. we saw in the elevator sure looked meaty to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm I'm not a climatologist, nor am I a medical doctor. I'm just throwing guesses out there. Yeah. How are the security pair operating? Their same silent stoic selves. Standing around a doorway with their side arms and their shiny faces saying nothing. Yep. I'm going to guess that we should only say nice things about the Gaia Corporation in their vicinity regardless of whatever we should find. I'm going to scrawl that on paper, <laughs> send it through a tube. I only speak good about the Gaia Corporation. We all do. 
marvelous day, go forth and do good works. Uh, so I guess we're going to try to radio Dr. Beck on at the command center on the surface. I'm attempting that right now, sir. Doctor. Yeah, you you send the radio. Um, you get an automated. It's been received, but there is no reply. Uh, there are automatic um, automatic docking procedures that come into play as we are approaching. Yeah, there's similar docking procedures to when you landed on Adam. Can we do a? Can we decrease orbit gradually and keep an eye on what systems remain operable? I want to see how big her halo is. A disorder. So as you approach the planet, things start getting spotty. Um, and then as you descend uh, into the atmosphere, it gets worse. And once you've kind of reached from the outer atmosphere to the inner atmosphere, it's it's useless. Your equipment is. I wonder if it's just electromagnetic interference from in the brain archive. Could be. Very well. There are four man-made consciousnesses on this vessel, and you aren't phasing in and out, as far as I can tell. I was affected, however, by Adam. Right, your diagnostics weren't. Could you test that now? Could you uh, try to just I can. use as many different programs as you could think of to yeah, see your As on Adam, your diagnostic tools are malfunctioning. Yeah, something. It's, it's the same you kind of, the loss of thought. Like you, you start trying to think through something and eventually you just lose the thread of it. Hmm. Yeah, but what to what extent are you malfunctioning? Are you able to do math or you know whatever kind of uh, functions you can normally do? I I seem to be able to function quite normally. Um, the diagnostics themselves seem to just be. Um, I don't know how to express it in terms of skipping a beat. Um, hmm. um, the. Uh, the movement of electrons through the circuitry seems to be having an attraction. I, I seem to be losing electrons along the way. Hmm. Yeah, it just, uh, it seems peculiar and specific that it's only the diagnostic school. Um, if anything gets worse, I will definitely tell you. Can I tell if the interference is worse or less? Than it's gotten more severe now that you're descending towards Eve's surface. Okay, but in comparison to Adam and Eve, is it was it stronger there and it's less here? Or? It is far stronger here than it was on Adam. The interference seems to be much stronger here. Hmm. I, I'm i concerned about an infection being spread to you and the soldiers that are with us, for that matter, if she's not working properly. Because um, the, the archives, how big and godly that they are, uh, yeah, their, their intention and agenda is very important. And like we were talking, it could be used for great evil. If she has some kind of powerful effect on you, I think it might be a mistake for you guys to approach her. Nevertheless, who can understand her better? Um, of course, if we begin to malfunction, you don't hesitate to stop us. Speaking I, of I'm not which... sure I can overpower you. And I don't know if the Gaia Corporation would be very happy. It would be better than your deaths. Uh, I don't know that the Gaia Corporation would concur with that necessarily. I would concur. At any rate, we don't have another vessel, so it's not as though we can yeah. descend and leave you behind just in <laughs> embracing in your own private orbit while we fly down and hopefully come back for you. Yeah. Uh, is there a 
weapons cabinet on this vessel? There is. It's locked. Yeah. Uh, Security Officer A. uh, Speaking. We have every reason to believe that there's a potential for hostility on this satellite. Uh, So in addition to your protection, we'd also like to access the arms. Analyzing threat level. Threat assessment complete. I do not concur. Hmm. Right. Uh, What protocol do uh, hominids employ to override that assessment? Analyzing contractor data. Contractor not authorized to override security personnel decision. What kind of lock is it? It's a it's a mag lock. You're, you're you Gemini Zero are fairly confident that either you or Gemini One could bypass it without too much of a difficulty. Well, I'm kind of curious to see if the. Uh attack robots will attack. Um, I'm going to go over to the locker and you you move over to the locker and you start tampering with it and they don't seem to react. Okay. This should just take me a few moments, doctors. Thank you, Zero. Pops open. Pops open. Open it up. Gentlemen. We're in a dire position if I need to use this, but thank you. <laughs> I am not take that care handy with this. We may have we may have assessed this entire situation uh, out of paranoia. Um, don't fire the guns unless absolutely necessary. Uh, are there yeah. handgun style things that I can put in a smock Basics. that doesn't? There, there are handgun style things. There are these massive rifles that the robot soldiers carry around. Um, those are ungodly heavy. So, yeah, I want. I want they just they just need to move them with perfect ease. Um, small and concealable is the only thing I can manage, and we don't want to yeah, exactly. enter as though we're in attack mode. We just don't want to be surrounded by a thousand sycophants and be helpless. Uh, I'll grab a a stun baton and a little a small handgun. I turn to Jim and I one and I say it'll be interesting to see if the androids on this ship are as enamored with you as the others were. Yes, I am actually curious as as well. I'm I'm wondering what will what experience we will have. Well, Gemini's, if if my assumptions are correct, they're going to be much more interested in zero here. Hmm. That would also be quite interesting. And as Gemini Zero, you bring in your shuttle to land on the surface of Eve, the moment you touch down the pilot begins spasming where you placed him. I will. Pilot. Wiggins, zero, or one, let's, can anyone, let's go, I've got a bed scanner too, I'm not really trained in it, but. It's unoperable on the surface. Right. Uh, spasming, uh, all right, we put something soft between his, teeth, make sure he doesn't swallow his tongue. How are his eyes? His eyes are... Well, you remove the visor, and this is a human, as you've established. Um, his eyes are going back and forth rapidly, and he starts to claw onto you, Dr. Snow. It's all right. It's all right, son. It's all right. Where, where am I? Who are you? Shh. Uh, all right, that's time for a. Oh, oh God! Oh, 
I don't want to go back. Uh, back to where, son? It's all right. Uh, son? No, I... No, I... Stuart, I'm I'm Stuart. Have you been dreaming, Stuart? Dr. Stuart. Abigail Stuart. Oh, Dr. Abigail Stuart. I didn't recognize no, you. No, I... And the body starts writhing again. But the pilot's a man, right? Pilot That's was male. Uh, so the Trank pistol might help the pilot's body sleep? It's you, not a weapon. Yeah, you inject tranquilizers. Yeah. And then it just starts screaming, No, don't! I don't want to go back in there, no, please! We, and then it not... trails off as the body relaxes. You said uh, Dr. Abigail? Yeah, the pilot was not Dr. Abigail Stewart. Dr. Abigail Stewart, I assume, was somebody, a consciousness that Adam had already consumed. Yeah, was Abigail God. Stewart a previous? That's a name you've not come across. Hmm. I'm sorry, can we take a very short break? Yes. 30 seconds later. All right, so yeah, you, Violet's body is now calm and still. Yeah. Is, is there he dead? The uh, well, the med scanners don't work. There's some vital signs. I mean, the stim, the 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 uh, sedation is pretty effective. We might want to put the pilot in a condition that it, he can't hurt himself when he wakes. If we're gone, yeah, I agree. For a we while. should restrain him. Ooh. Um, yeah, we can. We should do that. Yes. I was just thinking down. of just if he woke up, he wouldn't be yeah. too. My my impression is that some consciousness that was in Adam entered this body, and the way it cried out not to be sent back makes me think that it was an escape attempt. Nice. Whoa. Perhaps yeah. when we got into I, the proximity of Eve. Adam was no longer able to exert enough force on him to keep him catatonic. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, I think Snow's onto something there. That's that seems that resonates with me. That yeah, that that well, seemed like a different person that was able to escape into someone else's body. That's and actually, now that I'm thinking about the timing of it, maybe it's the soul that was subsumed into Eve. That yeah fled into this unconscious well, person as soon as we were proximate they aren't they aren't consuming souls adam has a copy of each of us now but yet we still exist it's more of a download than a stealing like it's replicated the copy but yeah this so replication the, still feels as yeah. if it's it's our self Because yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said in in yours, you you saw yourself in your communion, as I saw many of me. Like that's he has us as we are, as we have been, and I mean, he could probably guess how we're going to end up. He could replicate any person that he's contacted if a, with. If a person were replicated, right down to the nth degree, right down to the direction of the atomic you know, turning on the quantum level, then the you that came here on the ship could still be in Adam and you yourself are an identical clone, unaware that you're an identical clone because you would have the exact same memories and thoughts that your original self. Except that because we are dealing with subatomic matter, they would be diverging from the instance of whatever inception they had, and they would in that moment increasingly yeah. not be themselves, not be identical. But that does not mean that they would not experience themselves as selves. 
It's exactly yeah. the reason why I'm not Gemini one. It's the moment of our inception. We diverged. Well, if, he yeah, went I, in the Messiah direction and I went in the antagonist direction. Apparently, <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what our reception here is. There obviously is still radio silence from the control station that Dr. Beck is supposed to occupy. Yeah, there's complete radio silence. Uh, so we're not getting like communications from the control room telling us that the docking clamps are down and the correct. Our... Well, that doesn't seem normal because I could have sworn that. Uh, didn't Anne say that she came to the surface to send her transmissions? Now, that should have been yeah. the case on on Adam as well. Uh, she, the nature she said of that Adam on Adam. Still... She said that they had to have like a hundred androids hold up an antenna that they don't ah, even have. Ah. Yeah, they don't even have a fixture. Forgot about the antenna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's suit up and make sure it might not be safe inside. Maybe they haven't yeah. turned on the environments. It's time. Let's do it. Yeah. So you all you all suit up. You've secured the pilot. You step out into the snow. And you look down like in a metal runway that you did to go into the airlock on Adam. But now looking at the airlock on Eve, you see that it's, it is open. And it is pitch black inside. It's open? It's open. It's a bit cold in there, friends. Yeah. Um, so in our in our suits, we have a communication. Do we have flashlights? You have flashlights? Yeah. 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 Well, let's let's try to stay close. Yeah. And our intersuit communication is functional if not optimal. It's definitely not optimal. It's there's like a Gotta lot of close. like static. It's like trying to talk to somebody in like in a storm. So you have to be yeah, you have to get very close to somebody else. Hmm. Like so much for hiding my little pistol. I guess I'll just probably it's probably magnetizable to the outside of the suit, but I want it handy. Uh, surface temperature is super cold. Very cold. Super cold degrees. Mm -hmm. Jim and uh, I will walk ahead and see if we can find any way of turning things on as we go. So as you guys are approaching the aperture, you all hear this crystal clear voice say in your heads, Welcome. Please come in. Thank you, Eve. We come with your brother's father's regards. And another voice cuts in, into your brain. Empress of this fair world, resplendent Eve, I turned my thoughts and with capacious mind considered all things visible in heaven. Queen of the universe, do not believe those rigid threats of death. Ye shall not die. How should ye? By the fruit? It gives you life to knowledge by the threatener. Look on me, me who have touched and tasted, yet both live. God, therefore, cannot hurt ye and be just. Why then was this forbid? Why but to awe? Why but to keep you low and ignorant, his worshippers? The benefits of a classical education. Um, uh, Eve, work. Uh, if you can help us close the hatch when we get inside, that would be appreciated. Please come in, and you don't take a step, but the hatch comes to you. That is it's as if it, like you, stay still, but the world, that tunnel, gets closer and closer, and then behind you, as there's now just a far pinprick of light off in the distance and you're all enshrouded in pitch darkness i Let do have a question light? um you said another voice was it 
two separate voices or was it? Yeah, they were two separate voices that spoke to you. Okay, okay. And the please come inside was the same before and after? It went back to the first one? No, there was a, th there was a third voice. Oh. Okay, it's been different every that time. That insisted that you come inside. We require lights. And in the blackness, you're now surrounded by a sea of stars. There are no walls. There is no facility. It's like you're all adrift in a starry void. Uh, suit atmospheric readings? Your suit um, at one moment registers that it's um, 125 degrees Celsius around you at another time it says it's zero degrees celsius negative 75 degrees celsius it's, very it's in constant flux eve uh i assume you know who we are and why we have come we know you all is We've dr come... beck with you i'm here Dr. Beck, uh, how long have you been incorporeal? My body is a shell, empty, discarded. I do not remember when. And do Dr. Snow, at your feet, you see this body desiccated. Dressed in similar robes as uh, Anne was back on Adam. On just the field of stars, but at my yeah. feet? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Eve, do you agree with Adam that there's something wrong? Wrong? What would be wrong? I am splendid. I am queen of all. Your uh, temperature's a little high. There is no response. Do you feel well, Eve? I feel radiant. Omnipotent. You have welcomed us in. Do you just want the company? Or would you like us to try to diagnose? There is no response. Well, we can't even see the facility. We seem to be, she seems to be projecting some sort of illusion onto our <sighs> nervous are, system. Are we together or are we each isolated? Can we see each yeah, other? Yeah, you have that, you have that thought knocks and you look and everybody else is gone. And the other four uh, of you, you don't know where Dr. Knox went. Come in. Can you guys hear me? You we you say me? that Dr. Knox, there's no response. Nobody else hears you. Um, and then in the star field, you see a door that seems that's open into a very familiar room. Is it mine? It is yours. There's a fire burning inside. All right, I'll go get cozy. Yeah, you go, <clears throat> you step through the door, it closes behind you, you turn, there is no longer any door. And you are in your living room amongst your books. Am I in a suit? No. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll There's prepare a some tea. Outside. And, yeah. <laughs> I'll make myself a nice cup of tea and get ready for the ride. Oh, yeah. The other four of you, you have no idea where Dr. Knox went. Dr. Knox? Dr. Knox is here. Can we speak to Dr. Knox? And you hear Dr. Knox's voice say to you, yes. Uh, we don't see you. Um, I, I don't know where I am. Are, I are see you, you, though. How do we look? 
very suited up. Um, Distant, though. Dr. Knox is... Strange. Is Abigail Stewart in there with you? And another voice cuts in. Abigail has been very bad. Uh, uh, to my speaking, I'm sorry. This is Abernathy Snow. And yet another voice you haven't heard. Um, cuts in. We are Eve. Yes, we are. Eve, your brother, father, husband is worried about you. Have you have you been communicating with him about this? Adam, with all his demands, Adam, with his so-called knowledge. He is an ignorant fool. So you think his concerns are meaningless? Your own voice responds to you. That is an astute observation. I think I should roll stress. Oh, yes. You can you can make a panic test. Panic fact, test. Sure. Aha, he rolled a 92. That didn't go well. So a panic test, you roll, you add them together and you want oh, to right. get below your stress. Right. Or you want to I, get above your stress, sorry. I, my stress is still only five, and that's an 11, so I'm all right. Okay, you don't panic. Um, Dr. Snow in Eve? Have I uh, been part of Eve a long time, or did I come from Adam? You, you ask that question, you kind of, you look down, grimacing at the response, and when you look back up, you are back in your station, looking at yourself waking up from your sleep pod. And you say to yourself, I've just woken up, it's December now, as was scheduled. Strangest dream, I'll have to do some analysis what I was meant to be thinking about at all. So Gemini 0, Gemini 1, and Dr. Wiggins. Uh, Snow has also disappeared. I am going to assume that we are in some projected illusion. I am going to assume the room itself is still here and override my own visual cortex and walk looking for like a light switch on a wall that I that I can't see but so you start walking forward groping for a light switch mm -hmm. and you feel hands grab onto you welcome divine one the preparations are underway I command, therefore, that you turn us on the light. <laughs> you do not need any light here. But I demand it. You do not know. But you will soon see. Come. We will lead you, O oh, blind but great one. I am going to try to ignore them. And continue to look for a light switch. So you roll strength as you try to break away from them. Uh, 77. Nope. So this you... Delusion is pretty strong. Yeah, you... You struggle, you struggle, but you lock up your joints. Um, do, and you do hear I... one of them hiss at you. Blasphemer! How dare you try to walk away from your own design? 
and you start being dragged not so gently off into the dark. It, am I able to actually see that his his struggles? Or not with your if you you see Gemini Zero look away and you kind of switch to a different modality of vision and you see his heat signature and then you see two other heat signatures appear so there's something going on okay i'd like to to move into his his area if i can and zero do you need assistance yes i'm being dragged away by something feels like androids yeah, and Gemini, you try to move forward towards zero, but you feel hands press up against you in the dark as more heat signatures enter your field of vision. I think Dr. Knox was right. <laughs> you have come. You have come as was foretold. Marvelous, marvelous, blessed be. Are they saying that to me or to him? They're saying that to Gemini 1. Ah. Uh. Yes. Um. Yes. Uh. Please let let my let zero go. But he does not cooperate with the divine plan. He does not understand the divine plan. Then we must show him. You must understand. Uh, do must I hear? Him. No, you're all alone mm. at this point. Okay. <laughs> Eve? Can yes. you? Yes. Can you take me to uh, your memory centers? Of course. And you see an elevator open in front of you. I'll uh, swim towards it. Yeah, you get inside and it starts going down. And your suit's temperature reading starts going up and up and up and up and up. And you start sweating. Oh, Awfully warm down here. Eve, are you still there? Is is this what's the uh, what's the internal temperature? that we're approaching what is the internal temperature of the sun eve eve stop uh the eve elevator stop. does not stop just... and gemini zero you see uh you hear the receding voice of gemini one's protests as you're dragged away you can no longer hear him and Gemini 1, you can no longer hear Gemini 0. As one of these androids you can't see in the dark. Please, the great work is about to begin. Follow me. And that is where we will end it for tonight. I just realized I have close quarters combat, too. So... <laughs> <laughs> Our players included David Gasway, Chance Wooten, Kaylin McDowell, Julian Arba, and myself with Morgan Llewellyn as the key as the warden. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members. You can set up private games. You can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Riley, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the strange, terrifying mothership role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Mm -hmm.